Um, hi, my name is Carla Sang. Um, I am joined today by Carla Lily Hayworth and Alexander Pratmore, the stars of Cinder the Musical. Um, so you had your first night here at Swansea Grand Theatre last night. How did that go for you? Amazing. We had a full standing ovation at the end. Everyone was on their feet, so it was really well received. So very good. That's great. Um, so how much about Cinder Black's life did you know before going to the show, and how did you go about doing your research? Well. Not much, really. I knew her, I was born in the late 80s, so I knew her mm. from Blind Date and Surprise Surprise mm. and all that. Um, and so I didn't know a whole lot about her singing career in the 60s. Mm. So I did lots of research when I was auditioning and, and realised I actually knew quite a lot of the songs. And she, mm. was, a, she was a proper pop star in the 60s. And I, I didn't realise to, to quite an extent. Mm. So yeah, did lots of research, <laughs> watched, watched loads of videos. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit different for me because obviously being from Liverpool, she's a Liverpool icon and I was always I always grew up new and who she was but I never realized the magnitude of how big she was in the 60s and uh, and yeah that's about it I mean she was a patron of where I trained so she was always around and I always knew who she was but I never knew how big her career actually was mm. um, so you performed your opening show at Liverpool where Scylla is from and where she started her career so how did the audience respond to your show then right, it was incredible it was over a year ago now but um yeah, the opening night in Liverpool is a night I'll never forget. It was incredible. I was very nervous, obviously, quite clearly not from Liverpool, and playing a Liverpool icon. But I couldn't have imagined how the audience would react. Right from the get-go, they were on our side. They really, you know, were up for enjoying the show. And there was a standing ovation in the middle of the show after I sing Anyone Who Had a Heart, which was her first number one hit, at the end of the first act. And everyone in the audience stood up and I just, I, my mouth must have just been completely open because I, I didn't know what to do with myself, but it was incredible. Um, so, Kara, um, you've been playing Scylla for some time now. Yeah. Um, what lessons have you learned from Scylla's life and how has that changed you as a person? Well, I mean, she was quite inspirational and in she was so ambitious and she knew what she wanted. And, and it was in a time when not a lot of female artists you know were becoming successful it was lo it was loads of men you know the rock and roll era and she she knew what she wanted and she fought you know to be a star and she didn't let anybody stand in her way even even bobby her partner she was like this is what i want and he got offered a recording contract at one point and she she swiftly said no this is i do the singing so um yeah so it's, it's quite an inspirational story and it's a proper rags to riches story as well you know she grew up you know, on Scotty Road in Liverpool and didn't have a lot and worked as a coat check girl in the cavern and used to get up and sing with her mates, the Beatles and stuff. And yeah, so it is, it is quite an amazing story and you can learn a lot from the way that she handled herself. Um, so Alexander, you've, um, you recently actually graduated from Liverpool Acting School. Yeah. Um, did you ever picture yourself playing Bobby Willis? Uh, <laughs> at the, well, at the time when I graduated, uh, Scylla wasn't actually out. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I went straight into uh, cruise ships when I finished and I, I mean, doing a UK tour was, was always something that I would, would have loved to have done. But um, I mean, when the opportunity arose, we got the audition in uh, July and then obviously eventually got the job and started. I ne you never really plan anything in this industry, everything is so spontaneous, but I mean, I've loved every minute, minute of it. I mean, Bobby is such a, he's a lovely character to play as well. And, uh, and it, it just means a little bit more because obviously it's set in Liverpool. I mean, my granddaddy lived on Scotty Road. It's everything, everything was at my doorstep. So doing the uh, research and stuff, for everything for the show was a, meant a little bit more because I sat down with my grandparents. They went to Cavern. So it's, it's, a, it's quite a sentimental show to me. Um, how has it been um, touring the show around the country? Amazing, it's, it's mad how different the audiences are. Mm. You know, sometimes they can be a bit quiet and you think, oh, I don't know if they're enjoying it, and then they're still on their feet at the end. But it seems to be up north, that anywhere sort of yeah, near Liverpool, the north. They, they absolutely love it. But we haven't had a single show where we've not had a standing ovation, mm. which is remarkable. And, and, you know, even when you're feeling tired and, and, and stuff, when that happens and when the audience are on their feet and you can see how much it means to them, it, you know, it makes it all worthwhile but yeah it's been amazing we don't get to see much of the cities we could be anywhere most of the time yeah. we've got quite a busy schedule but yeah it's been great and Swansea's lovely <laughs> thank you um so musical theatre has um been going through this resurgence lately so um what do you think is the appeal of musicals 
Oh, I don't know. I've always loved music. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anything's really changed, but um, I think th there's a lot of amazing stuff coming over from Broadway, and a lot of a lot of these musicals about real people. You know, you've got Tina the Musical on the West End. You had Beautiful about Carol King, and I think when it's taking incredible songs, you know, it, it's a winner automatically because people love that music. And if you've got a great story around it, I think that's what makes them work so well. Um, so both of you play real historical characters. Um, is there any pressure on you to play your characters in a particular way? Yeah, I mean, there's a huge amount of pressure. I mean, Robert Willis, he's the executive producer on the show and obviously... That's still his eldest son. Yeah, so it's... There's that pressure there of like, well, I'm playing his dad on stage and she's playing his mum. And it, as strange as that sounds, you just want to, you want to get it right and you want to do it justice. I think that was the most important thing for me when I, when I met him. I just, I just want to make it right and I want to make it real. And um, I think that's the most important thing. And we had a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Rose Willison, who plays my brother's wife. Uh, and she came to watch it and she, she loved it. But it, it it's quite. I think it's quite an emotional thing as well because this is these are some, this is someone's life. You're telling their story, and it's so important to make sure it's told in the right way, in the correct way, in the tr and it's you've got to tell it in the most truthful way because do you know what I mean? It's yeah, it's 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 quite a nerve-wracking thing, and and obviously playing Scylla, she was so well loved by you know all all over the country. She was the, you know the nation's sweetheart. So I think, I mean, obviously you've got to sing all the songs and all of that sort of stuff, but getting the attitude across and the way, the magic that she had when she came on stage mm -hmm. and whether she was presenting or, or singing, the audience fell in love with her and that was, that was what she had that was so infectious. So to, to try and get that across, I think, is one of the most important things. And I remember way back when we were rehearsing for the first tour and, and Robert was in watching, and he, he got really emotional about things and, and was saying, oh, you, you were absolutely spot on on that, you were, and gave me notes and things like that. And, and it, it means so much. And having the real family members being such a big part of it, it's, it's quite an emotional thing. Mm. Um, so um, do either of you have any dream roles or shows that you would like to do after doing Cella? <laughs> I don't know. Just be employed. <laughs> I'm not yeah, too sure. Yeah, someone else. Yeah, I'm not too sure if I. Have, yeah, I'm not too sure about dream role, but I don't know. Just, no, just, just to carry on working. Yeah. There's a show that's coming over from Broadway called Waitress that I love to be in. Um, but yeah, apart from that, just yeah, whoever wants to win. Yeah. I just hope I get another job. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. Um, what do you hope audiences will get out of seeing some of the musical? I think. I mean, all of the music is incredible mm. and I think it will take, it will transport them back to that time, especially if they're, you know, from the older generation and that, that was their era, that music. But I, I think a lot of people will be surprised at how beautiful the story is. And it, it's written by Jeff Pope, who wrote the TV show that starred Sheridan Smith. And the script is amazing. It's such mm -hmm. a great story. Um, and, and I think people will be surprised at, the sort of emotional journey that that they'll go on. Yeah, I mean, like they came like the '60s was such a simpler time compared to now, and I mean, like they were just working class and everyone. I mean, Bobby was from Anfield, like by far not the richest area, and do you know what I mean? It was dead simple, and everyone was in the same boat, so it didn't. No one ever knew what what it felt to be like upper class. So, and I mean, it just shows like. In this instance, it was kind of, um, as cringy as it sounds, like love conquers all in that sense. And like, no. it, I know, it, <laughs> but it is, and if someone's driven and like his adoration for Scylla and he stood next to her through thick and thin through over those 12, those like 10 to 12 years of which of the start of her career with the most. Like, like complete devotion, mm -hmm. like, absolutely. And like he put his own life to the side and his own career because he just absolutely adored Scylla, so. Uh, so, last question, um, what tips would you give to an aspiring young actor today? Keep working hard, keep working on yourself and improving yourself. It's not, it's not an easy road. I spent a long time out of work. I left drama school, couldn't get an agent, couldn't get an audition to save my life. And I, I've just turned 30 last year and now I've got this amazing world. So people may look at me and go, oh wow, she's so lucky, you know. But it, it's been a hard mm -hmm. journey and it, and it doesn't always happen instantly. For some people it does. Some people leave drama school and just, you know, they're successful right away. But it, that, 
wasn't the case for me and it's not the case for the majority of people. So just keep working hard and believing in yourself and put yourself out there, you know, film yourself, do videos, put stuff on YouTube, go to gigs and do open mic nights and just keep yourself busy. That yeah, would be, that I mean, would be I, I, I firmly believe everything happens for a reason in this industry and like this industry is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Your time will happen when it happens, like yeah. you can't rush it, but yeah. you never ever stop learning. You learn more when you leave college than you do when oh, you're in college. Yeah. And you learn 100%. off, I never stop like learning off people you work with mm -hmm. and everything. So just work hard and be nice. Yeah. It's the best be thing. Be nice, that's very good advice. Mm. <laughs> Carla, Alex, thank you very much for doing this interview. Thanks, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much for coming, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.